Hey guys, it's Vera, and today I'm going to talk to you about my experience with PRK. And unlike LASIK, which involves cutting the eye and making a flap, instead they do not make a flap at all, they just remove the skin and it has to grow back. So that's why PRK surgery takes a long time to heal as opposed to LASIK, which takes like three days. <laughs> for my eye surgery, I did not try to bargain shop or anything like that. What I did was I searched for a doctor who had ha who had done a ton of surgeries. The doctor that I chose had done over 45,000 um, LASIK or PRK procedures, so it was second nature to him. I paid $4,000 for my surgery, so it was basically like 2,000 per eye. The doctor that I chose had a very calming meaner, like he just, radiated calm and like warmth. His voice really sounded like Bob Ross, the happy little trees guy from PBS, just like soothing. The day of my surgery, which was March 6th, I went in, I went through all of the last tests that they do, and then they make you sign the consent forms. After I signed the consent forms, I took a Xanax, because they asked me, well, how long does it take to take effect? And I said, it takes about 20 minutes. And so they had me come in and talk with the doctor. He's like, well, are you ready? And I'm like, no, my Xanax hasn't kicked in. So I went and took my second Xanax. And then I came back and he's like, okay, let's go. And so I did the surgery uh, sober without being sedated because my Xanax had not kicked in, which was really freaky and stressful. I basically was like, once I got on that ride, I was like, well, I, I gotta just do this now because there's no way I can stand to wait another, you know, two weeks or whatever to, for when an appointment would become available. I just need to get it done because I was pretty pretty terrified at that point, but I really wanted to do it no matter what. When I got into the room and they laid me down on the table, they gave me a teddy bear, they give you the choice between a teddy bear a teddy bear and a squeeze ball or both, and I took the teddy bear, I should have taken both. But they lay you down on the table and you're looking up and they cover your left eye so they can start in the right eye. And they put like what looks like a lifesaver in your eye so that they can go ahead and use rubbing alcohol to take off the top layer of skin. And it doesn't hurt. Like that didn't hurt at all. And then the next thing they do is put the spreader in your eye, which that hurt, especially because I was so nervous I couldn't relax into it. They tell you to try to relax into it, but I was like, trying not to hyperventilate. I was trying to do deep breathing. I was thinking of the litany against fear. I was just trying to stay calm because I was like, I'm sober doing this. I don't have Xanax, like it's not taking effect. Fuck, 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 fuck. I was just completely panicked. <laughs> and But I was trying to keep calm rather than just freak out because I'm like, I have to get this done. This is so important to me. I need to get through this. So they put the spreader in my eye and it's just like, before you know it, he's like, look up. And when you look up, you see four red lights, basically like a square. And then in the center, you see a green light. And he's like, look at the green light. And so you look at the green light and you hold your chin in place and you smell ozone, laser, because the laser is burning the air but not burning your eye, and then you're done. And it was over with so fast in my right eye, I was like, well, what the hell? <laughs> I just didn't expect it to be that fast or easy. Left eye, same thing. They cover up the right eye, they do the left eye, and then they, you know, again, take off the top layer of skin, which you don't feel, and then they put the little lifesaver in, and they put the spreader in, and I was able to relax into that spreader, and then they do the left eye. And that was it. It took less than five minutes. I'll tell you, my right eye hurt way more than my left eye for the next several days because I couldn't relax into that damn spreader. <laughs> so after my surgery, they hustled us out of the office and by the time we got to my car, I realized that they hadn't given me the drops that I paid for because it was my instruction sheet. We had to go back and wait for them to open up for lunch because like, I was the last procedure done before lunch. That was kind of annoying. Because I went home, I got into bed and went to sleep because finally by the time I got home, the Xanax had finally started to kick in my system and I could sleep. And that was the last night, or that was the last time that I slept well for the next three days, because the next three days were hell. I was in so much pain. I, I couldn't sleep, I was in so much pain. Like I would doze off and then come back and I would cry. And basically, I guess I was in so much pain just because, you know, when you take off a layer of skin and you're trying to grow it back, it hurts. <laughs> And they gave me numbing drops, but they didn't seem to do anything. With Dave and Ray's help, I basically had to put two different types of medicine in four times a day, and you had to space it out by five minutes. And then I had to put regular drops in my eyes. So I basically felt like I was putting drops in all day, and I couldn't really eat because I was just feeling like crap. And basically the entire time that I was in bed like this, I was either in my bed or I was in Dave's bed, 
and Phaedra would come with me wherever I went. She would not leave my side. She thought I was sick and needed to be protected. She didn't want to eat or go to the bathroom. She just wanted to stay right there by me. So I kept having to remind, remind people, hey, you need to take my dog out because I can't take her out and she really needs to go out even if she doesn't think she does. But she was inseparable from my side, which I really appreciated. She was like the only little bit of comfort I had. I was in so much pain, I just, I wanted to sleep and not be, not be aware of anything. And it was really hard. Finally, by Tuesday, I think I was well enough that I could listen to something and not be irritated. So finally, I started listening to comedians. I started listening to Aziz and Sari, and he was awesome. So I, I uh, made Dave find everything that, that, that was available on Netflix or Amazon or whatever that was him and um, listen to him. And he kept me laughing. I really appreciate his type of humor. Um, I also watched Russell Brand Messiah Complex. Like by the time I could, by the time I could put him up, I could actually see a little bit on the screen, which was kind of cool. And I watched Chris Rock. I wore sunglasses all the time. I even slept in sunglasses at the doctor's recommendation because I was super light sensitive. In fact, the first four or five days, I felt like I had night vision. I was like, oh, I have drow night vision. This is great because I could be in a pitch black room. And if there was a little like sliver of light coming from the window, I could see everything. Whereas Ray and Dave were like, we can't see anything. We can't see to put your drops in. We have to turn on a light. And I'm like, no, the light hurts. No more light. So yeah, that was kind of, it was kind of crazy. At the end of the um, first week, I went back to the doctor and he said that my eyes were on track and healing well, and I could read the 2020 line at the doctor's office even though everything was blurry and I couldn't use a laptop and he's like yeah it's just gonna be that way it can take up to three months and I was like well okay I'm really impatient so I didn't want it to take that long <laughs> but there's nothing you can really do to hasten it along you basically you just do the drops on the schedule like they tell you and then you're supposed to take um, a thousand milligrams or a you're supposed to take one of the thousand milligrams of fish oil and a thousand milligrams of vitamin C so I said, okay, so I just, I've been taking those pills every day like they instructed because it's supposed to help with the healing process. So on week two, I kept trying to use my laptop, trying to use my laptop, couldn't use my laptop, and I'm really grateful that I had a bunch of guest posts for my vlog for both week one and week two because I couldn't do anything and it just was killing me because I, I expected to be off for a week and that was it. I wish I had realized that I would know it would be two, three weeks, whatever, because I mean, it's been, it was two weeks this past Friday, and this past Friday was the first time I could actually use my laptop well enough to do any work. But it just kills me because I'm not used to being unable to do things. And by the end of the first week, I could actually, you know, watch TV, and then a little bit later, I could read my Kindle, but that's it. And I'm not used to sitting around not working. I'm used to, you know, I'm writing or I'm editing or I'm doing photography. I'm doing something. I'm not used to just sitting around. So it was very weird, very hard for me. However, I think it's got to be one of the best things I've ever done for myself. Um, while I was terrified to go through and have the surgery without having the Xanax kicked in, I was able to do it. I am definitely stronger than I realize. And I'm glad that I didn't let the fear control me and keep me from getting the surgery. I felt like that was a big growth moment for me because I think, you know, I've wanted the surgery since 1999, but I was always terrified and I let that fear control me. And I chose not to let the fear control me the day of my surgery. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of proud of myself for that because I didn't think I would be able to do it without drugs. <laughs> I'm still in that whole healing process, which kind of sucks, but I'm getting by. I'm able to do a little more every day. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm so amazed at how awesome it is to wake up and be like, I can see the whole room. I can see my dog. I can see everything. I don't need my glasses. I'm not like fumbling around going, where are my glasses? I'm not putting my contacts in. Um, I do sleep with drops on my nightstand so that I could put them in in the middle of the night if my eyes feel dry or whenever I first wake up because when I first wake up my eyes are definitely dry. As far as dryness goes, I know a lot of people complain about feeling like their eyes are dry but I really, aside from when I wake up, I haven't really felt that. But I always carry the drops with me so that if I do feel like they're dry I can put drops in. If you're considering getting LASIK or PRK, I definitely think you should get a, a consult for it because it really is life changing. There are so many things that are just so much easier without having to deal with glasses or contacts. It makes me really happy. 
Um, like I said, even though my vision hasn't finished stabilizing yet, and I'm still waiting for that to happen, I'm so much happier than I was dealing with contacts and glasses. So much happier. My eyes are still too sensitive to really wear makeup, although I did cheat today and put on mascara. Uh, I'm still light sensitive, so like the lights in here for filming video are killing my eyes right now. It's just, if I, you see me blinking a lot, that's why. It's just like, ugh, my, I, my eyes are hurting because it's so bright. <laughs> From everything I can tell and from talking to everybody I know who's had uh, LASIK done, LASIK is a breeze to heal. You're, you're, some people are, you know, fine within a day. Some people feel like, you know, it's within three days, but you're done within a week and you, you don't have any problems. PRK does take longer to heal, but it's well worth it in the end. And I know that some people don't want to do PRK because of the long heal time, and I'll tell you that even though the first day, th first three days were miserable, they fucking sucked, I was in so much pain, now that I'm over it, it's not so bad. So I feel like it was worth it to get through to have the eyes that I have right now. Even if they never get better than what they are right now, and they will, I would be happy with it because I can actually see my laptop, see my phone. If you are blessed with good vision, you are so lucky. I hope you appreciate it. If you are not like like me, like I was not, I had I've always had weak eyes. It's just it's life changing, and people say this. I, I know, like I feel like a a fanaticist or whatever, but people really do say it's life changing. It really is life changing. It is so nice. I'm so happy that I got through got through it and got this done. Anyway, if you are thinking about PRK or LASIK, definitely go get a consult. If you're unsure of how to find a doctor, I would definitely look for a doctor who has a lot of experience. Like I said, I found a doctor who had done 45,000 procedures. I wanted somebody that this was second nature for him, and that's exactly what I got. I'm very, very happy with that. And even though it was scary and I was sober, I got through it. So anyway, let me know what you think about my PRK experience in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much for watching.